Hi everyone, welcome back to Biological Imaging. I'm Joe DeGeorgis. Today we're going to talk about phase contrast microscopy. So far we've talked about two other imaging techniques, bright field and dark field microscopy. And in those demos we used prepared microscope slides. In that case the samples were fixed so they're no longer alive and they were stained with histological dyes. In these prepared slides the dyes could stain different parts of the tissue different color. For instance, it might stain the nuclei purple, while it stains the protein elements blue. Or the dyes could stain different parts of the tissue with different intensity, some regions of the sample taking up just small amounts of the dye, while other regions are fully saturated. In this way, different colors and different intensities create contrast which allow you to differentiate different structures within the tissues or within individual cells. But what do we do if we want to make observations of live material? Oftentimes, unstained tissues have very low contrast by bright field light microscopy. When we talk about stains, we dye the tissue. And for instance, if we used a purple dye, the purple tissue would now absorb all wavelengths of white light coming from the light bulb except purple, which is reflected and observed by our eye or found in our photographic image. Not only can the tissue absorb light, but it can also have other effects like bending the light and slowing the speed of light down. Phase contrast microscopy takes advantage of these last two effects that the tissue has on light to make some regions of the sample brighter and others darker to create contrast. So how does phase contrast work? In the microscopes that we're using, the light source is a light bulb with a filament and the light bulb gives off white light. And we said that we have a field diaphragm above the light source, which is an aperture. So you can have a small opening, a small aperture, you can have a very large aperture, and that just controls the light beam that exits the bottom of the microscope. And in general, we want enough light to fill the entire field of view, but you don't want stray light flowing around the room, and it might affect how you see the sample or how the camera detects the image. So you want to try to minimize stray light. Then we have a microscope stage which holds our sample. So we have the stage and of course we have a slide and then a sample and a cover slip. And we have a microscope objective like a 10x for instance, and when we're focusing the sample, you're really focusing the objective. There's a distance away from the microscope objective where the focal plane is located for that particular objective. And what you want to do is move the sample up and down through that focal plane until you find a region of the sample that you want to have in focus. So we're moving the stage up and down relative to the microscope lens, which is fixed in place, to move the sample into the focal plane. Then we have a condenser lens. In the condenser lens, we said, focuses the light onto the sample. So we have rays of light that hit the condenser lens, the bottom of the condenser lens, and then the condenser lens focuses the light onto the sample. And to focus the condenser lens, it's mechanically attached to the stage, and we move this lens, the condenser lens, up and down relative to the microscope stage or to the sample, but we've focused the objective by moving the stage and then we're moving 
focusing the condenser lens by moving the condenser lens up and down. And so this is attached, the condenser lens is attached to the stage, but it can move up and down with a focusing knob. And if we move the stage up and down now to refocus the objective, the condenser lens stays with the stage and it moves up and down together. That is the stage and the condenser lens um, move up and down when you focus the focus knob for the microscope objective. And we said that we move this condenser lens either left or right or forward or backwards until the light that's falling onto the sample is lined up with the objective in the process of setting up curler illumination. So it turns out in phase contrast, it's the same microscope that can do phase in this case. And so we have our light source in our field diaphragm again. And this time they put in a disc is called an annulus and the disc has a region that's completely opaque that is light can't penetrate through that region of the disc of the annulus and then there's a region where light can pass and then an outer region where the light can no longer pass either. So you have this ring of light, and this is also true for dark field microscopy. It's a similar, it's a sim similar situation. And when you put this into the microscope, the disc is here, and the edges, let's see if I can get the eraser, Oops. Eraser. So there's these regions where the light, whoops, I need to get back to my pen now. Now the light can come up through these spaces, so through this region right here. So the light can pass through, and then now this light hits the condenser lens. And these two, this cone of light gets focused to the sample. So our slide and our sample and our cover slip, which of course is on the stage. And it turns out that there is, within the microscope objective, there's another ring type structure just like this one except that the material that's shaded in black here is not completely impenetrable so light can pass through it it just doesn't pass through as quickly and as easily as the light passes through so we have another ring like this and this part is shaded in Okay. And that is in the microscope objective itself. So this light, whoops, this light then passes through here and through here. So Okay, let me try to redraw this one more time. So we have our light source, which is just a light bulb, and we have our field diaphragm, which allows light to pass to the annulus. And the annulus has, is a disc that has regions where light cannot pass. I mean, it's totally opaque. and then regions where the light can pass. So the light comes up from the light bulb like 
this. And like so. So the light can make it through. And we said that there's the annulus is a disk with a central region that's totally opaque, so light can't pass through that region of the disk. And then there's an area that's clear, so light can pass through that part of the annulus. And then this outer edge also is completely opaque, so light light can't pass through that part of the annulus. So the point is, is that there's this little ring where the light can pass. And if you put this disc on its side and you insert it in the light path, then there's, there's these regions here where the light can pass. And of course, this is a two-dimensional image of a three-dimensional object. But the light passes through in these two columns and then we have our condenser lens. And the condenser lens, as we've said many times now, focuses the light to the sample. Like this. And if there was nothing in the path, so we just had, let's say, our glass slide, which of course is, is on the stage, which I'm not going to draw, then this light would then just continue on through the glass slide into the microscope objective. like this. And if I draw this a little bit bigger, whoops, uh, let me draw it over here. So here's our microscope slide and we have this light like this and like this. So this is light, two beams of light. It's a cone of light. There's no light here. And it goes through the glass on both sides like this and within the microscope objective this this is the 10x objective there is a phase ring which matches this annulus. I mean, it's a pair. And the phase ring is very similar to the annulus. That is, it has regions where the light passes easily through this region here and this region here. And then these are not totally opaque. Light can pass through these pieces of the ring, but it's a material that slows the light down. It could even be glass. Glass slows the light down. So it could be thicker glass right here, for instance, and this could be, it could be thin glass in this portion here. And, but the light if there's no specimen, the light simply passes like this and ultimately gets focused back onto the image plane, which is outside of the outside of the microscope objective. But if we have a sample here, then the light can't simply pass. I'll try to draw it over here. You have two a cone of light that's hitting the sample and now instead of this just passing easily through the glass slide, now we have a sample on it. So the sample 
can take rays of light and move them, bend them, or refract them to different regions. So now there's some light rays that end up hitting these regions of the phase plate. And this, these rays of light get slowed down by, they say it's a quarter wave plate, one quarter. So it slows these rays down by one quarter. And then when this light comes back together, is focused back to this spot, the light rays interfere with one another. So what do we mean by interference? So, you know, if we took two rocks and we dropped them into a pool of water, the waves, of course, spread out in rings, right? And the waves might be like this. And if the waves from this rock and the waves created by this rock move towards one another, the, the wave can either, this wave is coming along like this in this direction, and this wave is coming along like this in this direction. And if they're in phase with one another, when they hit one another, this goes up to a higher wave, and that is perceived in light when they come together. That would make the light brighter. And if they are out of phase, so you have a wave here like this, and then the other wave, if I can draw this, is out of phase like this. When these two waves come together, they can cancel each other out. And that would make the wave smaller or non-existent at all, but it could be it could be a partial small wave, and that would be perceived as darker in light. Well, not the easiest concept in the world or the easiest one to explain, but how do we set up phase contrast with our microscopes. Now, first of all, not all microscope objectives can do phase. In our case, the 5x objective doesn't have a phase plane, so it can't do phase contrast, but the other microscope objectives do. And I mentioned earlier that the annulus and the phase plate are paired. The phase plate is built into the microscope objective, and you need to know which annulus to use with that particular objective. It's referred to as phase one, phase two, and phase three. So this is our 10x microscope objective and you can see that engraved into the barrel of the microscope objective is pH one, which means phase one. You need phase one, the phase one ring. On our microscope, there's a turret below the condenser lens that allows you to either set the microscope up for a bright field, or if we rotate it counterclockwise, dark field, phase three annulus, phase two annulus, and for our 10x microscope objective, it's engraved with pH 1, so we need to match this annulus with our microscope objective. The 20x is phase 2. The 40x is, let's see if we can see it on the 40x objective, pH 2. So phase 2 for the 40x and then for the 100X, it's phase three. 
Okay, so this is our sample under bright field microscopy set up in curler illumination. Let's see what happens when we switch it into phase contrast. This is with our 10x objective, and I'm just going to turn the turret from bright field to phase one, and now we're in phase. So you can see it's much easier to see the sample now. And we can move around a little bit on the stage and watch these cool guys swim around. Okay, now if I want to go up to a higher magnification like 40x, I need to first swing the 40x objective into place by moving the objective turret. So that's the 20x objective, and this is the 40x objective, but the annulus is still the phase one annulus, which is the wrong annulus for the 40x objective. We said that the 40x uses phase two. So I'm going to rotate the turret that holds the annulus until we get to phase two. And here we go. So we're at the 40x objective in phase two. I'm going to try to focus the microscope a little bit. Well, we have to find the critter. There they are. Okay, there you have it, phase contrast.